That went on way too long. I mean, it's a loop. Um, that was the video in arcade top ten theme song. Like ten percent of our audience at best is gonna get that reference, That's but fine. the ones who do are people of culture. Yep. Um, it's all free on YouTube because nobody's protecting that copyright. Well, I mean, the f- fifteen to like 18 episodes that exist are free on YouTube because it was not archived very well. And that's a shame because that is a real piece of video game history. Um, All of the kids on that show look so uncomfortable (laughs) all the time. But we both would have killed to be on it. No, I I remember getting really bored watching it. Okay. Well, I would have killed to be on it and I would have have killed at it. Oh, hi, Junkman. For people who are unaware, it was one of those things they played like, in between other shows when they're when their scheduling got off beat and they needed like a 15 minute filler to push everything back to being on the half hour they would play video in arcade top 10 so like i'd sit there being like but zoids is supposed to be next and they'd be playing that shit instead and some awkward fucking kid would be like yeah mario party i mean the kids never talk that's like (laughs) yeah mario party (laughs) man we are just doing an excellent job of retaining our audience at the start of our first podcast what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this to the middle (laughs) (laughs) uh hello welcome to basement life it is a podcast where we talk about life in, in not the basement yeah because we you can live. tell from <laughs> natural light yeah we, the <laughs> amount of people who still especially on your ai video early segue um comment and are like this is why you live in your mother's basement you idiot <laughs> yeah jokes on them you own a house with a basement yeah that you I, I got my own basement that we're not even in right now because <laughs> uh better light yeah but the amount of times that came up as like a comment on your your AI video, um, which is what we're going to talk about first today. I, I guess it is. I mean, you guess we already went over this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to the people. Um, yeah, I mean, but I mean that makes sense. You know, you're you're going to get low effort comments from people who think that AI is going to make everything for them. That that just makes sense. Um, I don't want to like shit on all of the commenters because there was like a broad spectrum of good arguments for and against the technology and implementation of it uh but man i i do gotta say that like the bottom tier of those comments is like easily the most gazing into an abyss that i have ever felt while reading youtube comments and you you guys need to understand if this is the somehow the first of my videos that you've seen i talk about anime for a living on the internet and that was the most dumpster fire comment section you've ever I, had. I've had very strong and controversial opinions about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Naruto, fucking SAO. That was the worst comments I'd ever gotten. Um, yeah. It just. <sighs> and it's still going, too. They're still at it. Yeah. They're still there leaving their comments and then liking them right after they leave them. The amount of comments that are like when you refresh the app that are like 15 seconds old and already have a thumbs up is yeah it's 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 a little weird um but you know it 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 makes sense you know it's that that sort of mob mentality corridor digital put out a video um ai or anime rock paper scissors uh where they used ai to rotoscope themselves doing a bunch of stuff and like on a lot of levels, I, I, it's not a bad video. You know, it's it's got like good direction, fun writing. Uh, you know, about on par with all of their other anime parodies. Um, I've never seen any other stuff or heard of. I'll be right back. Here, it's a person with a flyer in their hand. Get down. Okay, we're, so we're, we're no, just gonna whisper the rest of the podcast. Now we're near the front of the door, but get down. Get down. <laughs> What 
was I talking about? Right. Quarters. I, I, I was just throwing out there. I've never seen any of their videos. So this is my first impression of them. Good job, guys. My second impression being the comments about their oh. NFT love. Good job, guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, they walked that one back, I think. So so bully, bully them harder. Hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked last time. Do it again. Yeah. No, they, they, they made some, like, really bleeding edge stuff on YouTube back in the day. They, they um, you know... You met Freddie Wong. Yeah, I don't yes, know if you yes. watched Freddie Wong stuff when no. you were younger. No. I, um, it's not your type of thing. But they made, like, videos where they'd use special effects to do, like, video game scenarios in real life or just, like, cool fight scenes. Um, it was, you know, legitimately, like, raising the bar for what YouTube could be. Um, and like, I'm trying know, to think of what I was watching at the time. Back then. I don't know smosh and makeup tutorials that i was never gonna do Jenna know. marbles no yeah yeah i was watching michelle fawn tell me to wash my face with kitty litter that's what i was watching yeah. back then uh vlog brothers maybe yeah for sure yeah, i yeah. was oh yeah 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 i was i was deep into that them dftba <laughs> <laughs> so anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> just leave me out oh my god uh so yeah, so Corridor like they're YouTube pioneers, um, and you know as a VFX team, they're they're a pretty impressive group of guys. They seem like nice guys too, um, but like yeah, they, I don't know my impression of them so far. Yeah, on this thing has been frustrating to say the least. So they they put out this this anime rock paper scissors where they rotoscoped it with AI. Um, and, you know, like I was saying, there are good things about it in terms of how it was directed. Uh, you know, I, I would say that the writing was about on par with their other anime parodies, which I've seen funnier anime parodies on YouTube, but like they always bring it with the direction and the, the uh, effects compositing. And the compositing on this was really good. Like they did a good job of hiding a lot of what was wrong with the animation, which was so much because it's you know it's ai generated uh art in sequence so there's you know fucked up hands all over the place faces melting three uh, rows of teeth yeah or, or teeth melting into the lip and also turning gold a lot of really weird things um but you know like the the fundamental problem wasn't how it looked it was how they made it which was by uh, taking the uh, taking the art style of Vampire Hunter D, uh, Bloodlust, which is a fantastic movie by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, um, guy behind Ninja Scroll, uh, Demon City Shinjuku, a lot of classic, very violent 80s anime. I have never seen Vampire Hunter D, but I have read not the manga. That's the thing. Did you read the light novels? Uh, I Maybe. So a little interjection. When I lived in Japan, um, there was a book off attached to my train station home. And if I missed my train, it was another like two hours for the next train. Um, and I there was this very small selection of English books because I was in the middle of nowhere. It was like the one English teacher who kept selling their books back to book off. And that was one of the ones that I got. Hmm. But I didn't like it. But I did read it. <laughs> you did read it, but you didn't like <laughs> it. That's like my only knowledge of it randomly is I've never seen it. I've never read the manga. But I do remember randomly reading one. The original novel? Or like, something, yeah. Like In Japanese? No, in English. In English. That's what I was saying is they had this time. I would read whatever was, was there. Was it translated into English? I read something Vampire Hunter D that was all words, no pictures. In <laughs> I, English? I, yes. Huh. I didn't know it had been... Here's a pause to fact check. Uh, we're not I think that's enough time. No, I'm yeah. going to put it over top. I'm yeah. not doing it now. I'm doing it later. <laughs> okay. Fuck that. Um, that I, was my our pause to put it over the screen. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, there's the clarification. <laughs> that's that's interesting because like like the books would be like the one thing that you'd least expect an English person to yes, have. I did not like it. I did not like it. That's fair. It's like everything that you don't like. Oh, I don't think it's bad. Yeah, it was just I didn't. I gave it's it a chance. But anyway, taste. anyway, back to back. Right. So, so the the like big problem with what Corridor did was they used stable diffusion, which is 
technology that's built from a data set of stolen artwork from across the internet. Yep. Um, and on top of that, they fed into it a bunch of stolen artwork from an anime movie that they didn't have the rights to, didn't have permission for. Um, and that got uh, pretty much the entire animation and art community on Twitter frothing. Um, people are... Negatively. Yeah, yeah. Very, very upset with uh, the practice and the attitude that they've had afterwards. Like, I, you know, as a YouTuber, um, I, I, I think we understand the getting defensive over something you've made that people aren't responding positively to, right? You know, and, and like, I can see from their perspective how it, how like every step of it made sense to do, right? Like they were figuring out the process so it didn't make sense to hire an artist for their test footage. But like once they proved it with the test footage, you know, they're, they're a VFX YouTube channel. Um, as he's just going to check no, the camera. Um, I, actually, I wasn't just going to check the camera. There was a whisker on the ground. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah as he I'm collects. sorry. I'm sorry. I, I spotted a whisker and I had to go get it. I'm sorry. I, I swear we'll get through this conversation eventually. Um, Have you guys heard of the... Um, North America wide ADHD med shortage because I sure have. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. The... Sorry, I'm sorry. I collected the cat whiskers. <laughs> Carry on. It's very normal behavior. You can find literally dozens of people who do it on the internet. Um, but yeah, so so like I I understand like how it probably got there you know they they made test footage using vampire hunter d because like they don't even know if the process works yet so it doesn't make sense to pay an artist to do a bunch of stuff for something that you're not sure if it's going to work um and then they're you know a vfx testing channel so like they put out their test footage for people to see um that also makes sense and you know they th from discussions they've had since it seems like they hopefully intend to hire artists if they do this kind of thing again um at this point i feel like they might not just because haha fuck you guys with the way they've been reacting to the reaction yeah that's... i just feel like their next move will be like because you guys reacted like this we didn't hire artists i don't know if you saw their you did see their last of us thing yeah anyway. yeah the the last of us as a video game um Shit joke. Post. The joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where they, you know, didn't even make the footage behind it. So that's uh, a, a layer of defensibility yeah, gone. That was their but, that was their goofy response. But yeah, like like I I I can see the process of how like it got to being posted, but like I think that they sh once they had the process nailed down they probably should have gone back and retreated their footage with um, uh, like actual artist input instead of just lifting the style of a classic anime. Um, you know, the, it's disrespectful on a lot of levels to do that. Um, and, you know, also the, there's the underlying issue of, of stable diffusion being built on entirely stolen artwork, which is... You know, the 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 guys who are in favor of the technology will argue, well, you know, it, it, it can't directly reproduce what's in the data set, even though it can. You know, it's been proven that it can in certain circumstances. We don't know exactly how much it's remembering or how much it can reproduce. But, like, you know, even if you take that away, there's still... If you, if you put a apple in front of a computer... Um, in front of its webcam and tell it to like render out a drawing of that apple. Even if it's got this algorithm on it, if it's not trained by the data set, um, it, it's either going to spit out random noise or just a picture of the apple, right? Whereas if you put uh, like a, a human child who has not been exposed to much or any art um, in front of a piece of paper and a crayon and tell them to draw an apple, 
uh, they're going to produce something. It's not going to be something good, probably, but it'll be something unique to them. Um, and like, I think that that fundamentally, the the fact that this AI can't put out anything without the input of the artists whose work has been scraped means that those artists deserve as much, if not more, compensation for you know the the end products and commercial uses of this if it should be used commercially at all and like the way that it's being done now it's completely cutting them out um and you know if if corridor had just put out the short by itself it would have been one thing but they also put out this video titled did we change animation forever where they go through like you know a, a basic tutorial advertising a much more in-depth tutorial of how they did it that's behind a paywall on their website um and they you know they they launch into this big spiel about how animation isn't democratized and this this will allow more people to open up their visions and it, it's that's where it gets into like really bad territory on mm -hmm. a lot of levels and i think that's what pulled like the really shitty people out of the the woodwork, the people with no respect for artists, the people who are like, oh, you know, if you if you can't automate something, you should. Um, the people who are like, well, artists aren't special, and I should be able to, you know, just because I don't have the the time or talent to oh boy to draw, you know, my own stuff, like the talent stuff especially. Yeah. So I I have so much beef with that specific argument, like. And I think 99.9% .9 of artists will agree that it is not, the talent is not a thing. You are not just magically born with talent. Talent is the result of hard work, right? Like nobody picks up a pencil and creates the number one trending thing on Pixiv. Yeah. Like you don't just pick it up and do that out of nowhere. It's hours and hours and years and of, of just time spent doodling and drawing and practicing, even if no one taught them, mm -hmm. they've been repeating it over and over and over again. Like with piano is yeah. the other example I used when we were talking. Like nobody just wakes up and is a pro at piano. They might be born with the already having that like ability for their brain to work two hands at once, but they weren't born with the ability to read music and play it and memorize it and, and, yeah, they get that from practicing, and I feel like it's so insulting to imply that they're just born that way. Yeah, like and stuff like anybody can do it. Just like how anybody, a one-person team can make a movie, yeah. right? A one-person team can make a game that is a hit, but yeah, dial-up noises. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 like the the talent equation is like. Oh, it just makes me mad that argument of like, well, not every now people without talent can can make what they want. You can you can make what you want too. Yeah. Pick up a pencil, pick up paper from the dollar store, yeah, and go practice. and go, yeah. and you can make your own stuff. Yeah, talent amounts to like starting at level four instead of level one, or like maybe you get like an exp boost on how fast you learn. Right. You know, like there are undeniably people who have a better knack for picking up art than others, but like... But anybody can do it and, with and, enough and, practice. And, yeah, and everybody who does it needs to practice a lot to get good. Yep. That's, that's to the... To get good and stay good. And, and you know, there there's so many people who, like, resent that and come out and say stuff like, um, well, you know, I, I have all these great ideas... And now I'm going to be able to make them the same way that uh, you guys can. And, and your elitist attitude, which is such a fucking infuriating th thing to say for something that's mostly going to put, uh, you know, mid to low level laborers in the animation industry out of work. You know, that's such an infuriating thing to say. But like, you know... You know, people who think like having a good idea is the core of making art are like coming out in droves to like support and uh, promote this tech. And I think that's really bad for our culture and the future of art. Cause like, 
you know, like you can you, you can make the argument that, you know, it's like automation where, you know, it, it, it took uh, looms, took a lot of the work out of making textiles. Um, you know, robots took a lot of the work out of making cars, et cetera. Um, and, you know, there is a valid comparison there that people lost jobs there, too. And that's bad. The, you know, like the people who are like, oh, you, you were in favor of this for all of these other things, but you don't like it when it happens to artists. No, like most artists are kind of socialisty and would also argue against those forms of automation. But um, like fundamentally in those cases, the process isn't like part of the point, you know, it, it's there's there's a satisfaction in it. And, you know, I think like there's a unique quality to handmade textiles, uh, handmade um, tools and, and uh, furniture and whatnot that uh, is worth valuing. But like with art specifically, the individual minute to minute decisions of where you place each line, where you, you know, craft the expression of the characters, where you lay the color down, you know, all of those decisions are part of what the artist is subconsciously communicating. And this technology just rips all of that out of it, right? Um, and I, you know, I'm not saying that there's not places for it in animation. People bring up the, the idea of it uh, filling in colors for frames, which is, you know, that that's a hugely time consuming piece of work. I mean, uh, it would put a lot of colorists out of work and they, they put their uh, own, uh, you know, effort and time into that. But like, you know, there are, there are places where it can save time and make animation more efficient. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that, but like, with the fact that it's built on stolen artwork and couldn't exist without it. Yeah. Um, and the fact that like, it's, it's basically gonna be used to take artists out of the equation. Uh, I think we need to be really wary of it. And people who are like, oh, well, it's gonna open up independent animation studios or independent uh, film studios to do their own thing. That's true, but like with the ease with which people can put out low quality but good enough stuff, there's also like a big danger of it completely flooding the market and making it impossible for those independent creators to get discovered while, you know, the big companies who are using it to phase out uh, most of the mid-level and entry-level jobs in the industry are just pumping more and more shit out and uh, getting more and more dominant within the space. And, you know, I, I, in my video, I went into how it can also like undermine labor relations and stuff like that. Yep. It, it, there's just a lot to be wary of. And, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that people should feel bad about being excited about the potential for it. Right. And, you know, I know artists who are like, oh, this is going to boost my workflow. Um, this is going to let me, you know, do a lot more stuff on my own. You know, that that's good. But, like, you, you got to be wary of where the tech's coming from, how it's built. And you got to understand that, like, this is kind of looking like a gold rush situation. And in any gold rush, at the end of the day, the only people who really make any money from it are the guys selling the shovels and like there's no guarantee that this technology is going to be free forever you know like the open ai and stability and all of these companies that are working on the tech and the nonprofits that provide their data sets which are nonprofits in germany because german nonprofits specifically have like uh looser rules with how they deal with copyright you know, there, there's like a lot of shady behavior already going on at the top here. Um, they're not really open source projects, you know, like they've got the, the source open so that other people can contribute, but like they're owned by people with a lot of money who can like 
you know, flip a switch, change the license, put out a better version of it that, that you have to pay exorbitant amounts of money for. Um, and like, uh, the, the lack of caution really worries me. And the like number of people coming out who like just clearly hate artists and are thrilled to be able to cut them out of the process really worries me. And again, I don't necessarily think that the corridor guys are bad guys. Um, you know, uh, w while some of the responses that they've had have been kind of jerky. Um, but like, you know, like I think they're enthusiastic about the technology and trying to like experiment and, and see what they can do with emerging tech, you know, uh, it's, it's very much that, um, you spent so, t so much time worrying about if you could, that you didn't really think at all about if you should or how you should. Or what happens if you do. <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. What the long-term ramifications will be. And yeah, I, I it's a whole mess. Um, and of course, you know, it being the internet, there are battle lines being drawn. But I just want to say categorically that like the full, the, the full throated endorsers of AI and full blown automation of art specifically are the absolute worst people I've ever interacted with on the internet. Yep. Oh my um, God. So let's move on from that to other cool things. stuff. Other things. Watch it. And maybe read, read it. I, I was going to get there. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Take two. Watch it. Read it. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. Uh, our next topic after we, that. <laughs> we got to we gotta roll back. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, the, in the time since our uh, last uh, podcast. Last week. Last week, yeah. No, we, we have a good excuse for this one. Um, or we had one that kind of got carried out for like a month. But whatever. <laughs> for like a week. For exactly a week. It's fine. Um, so in between now and our last podcast, right around the time that we were planning to do our next podcast. We Specifically got, about seasonal or the year, year in review of anime. The yeah. big one. Um, we came down with a real bad case of norovirus. First me. <laughs> Then Yazzie. That's how it um, works. Which, by the way, it is definitely heavily circling the world in general right now. So, uh, yeah, stop going outside if you're sick. Please. Please. But anyway, in the time that we were laid yes. up in bed, uh, we watched all of Summertime Rendering, which finally came out on uh, Disney+. Plus. It's free from Disney jail. They really fucked it. Yeah, they it did. It came out at, like, the beginning of, like... They, they dropped it, like, January 7th or something. But, yeah, it came out um, in spring of of last year. Uh, it would have been... 2021. Two. 2021. No, 2022. Wikipedia, don't let me down. Sing your song. <laughs> it was 2022, though. I... I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, but April, yeah, <laughs> April 15th, 2022 was the uh, original Japanese release, including Japanese Disney. Yeah. Did, J Disney plus Japan had it. But they, they, they hadn't figured out how to do simulcasts like they did with by the time that Bleach came out. So it just sort of stayed out of the English speaking sphere while it was airing and completely lost its chance to like have people talking about it. And I think they would have. Because like it's, it's an inc so good. It, it's a great mystery series. It's, it's so good. Yeah. So like like, um, we're gonna get into talking about it in a little more depth because we've been itching to talk about it for a really long time. But uh, we'll we'll put a chapter marker here. Um, so if you want to experience an incredible mystery that like has some of the best like expectation management specifically in its pilot episode to like if you like higurashi and erased and cool fight stuff that fullmetal alchemist has there you go go for it yeah higurashi and erased 
and Full Metal Alchemist. I just I think that the fight choreography and stuff and the way the fights work and stuff they just hit something that FMA Brotherhood hit for me. So it's not like like FMA, but like yeah. Yeah, no, it's not like FMA at all. But, but it, it something about those fight scenes and the way they're choreographed and, and stuff remind me so much of FMA. So that's why I'm throwing it in there. But Higurashi and Erased. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's really strong. So if you like mysteries, you like you like cool twists and stuff like that. Um, I, I can't recommend enough just going into this one blind the way that we did. Um, yeah. We, you know, we, we like made a point of not looking up anything about it after we watched the first episode because we just, it's such a great ride. And I'm not normally somebody who cares that much about spoilers, you know. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no. It, it, it's really, it's really good. And it's a shame that it got Disney because now nobody, there's like no, no hype around it you like mention it and people are like oh i, I is i mean that one's on my list because they've been hearing about it for a year yeah but like yeah like garnt hyped it up in in his end of year video but like sort of in the middle of that video and and like also there's so much coming out people don't go back and check out old stuff anymore yeah so if it, it's it, not like constantly shoved in their face right now they're I mean, of course, there are some people who are going to watch it and read it based off recommendations, and you should too. But unfortunately, the anime masses um, don't respect it as much as they should because there's just so much fucking anime coming out. And unlike, you know, Netflix, Disney doesn't really promote its anime at all. Yeah, yeah there's no, um, like, nothing. It was just... It was just dropped onto their star service, and uh, yeah. It's so Yes, and we're going to talk about why it's so good after this spoiler jump. So get out of here if you're worried about spoilers. Shoo, be gone. Go, go. Shoo, <laughs> click it, click it. If you're still here uh, and you don't know what summertime rendering is about in general terms, um, the best way to describe it is like ReZero meets Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Um so but it's not an isekai so it's not an isekai just throwing that out there for you isekai haters me too me too um it's not an isekai yeah it's about this guy who um he, he lived away from from his small island home for a couple years in tokyo but he comes back for his friend's funeral um or his family member's funeral his his yeah, his sort adopted of his adopted, his adopted sister, member. kind of like it, it, they were childhood friends first, and then his parents died, and her family took him in. Yeah. Um, and he went to Tokyo in part to like create some distance, so it wouldn't be so weird that he has a crush on her, uh, and that caused like a whole split between them. Um, but then she died s saving a young girl from drowning, um, and that. Uh, you know, is is very tragic, obviously. But when he gets to her funeral, there's people talking about how she had, like, strangulation marks around her neck, and they, they don't really, you know... It doesn't really add up that it was just a random accident. Uh, and then the body snatchers thing comes in when we learn about this uh, curse on Hitogashima Island um, where people's shadows come to kill them and replace them. What's really cool about it is the main character has a time loop ability, like uh, Subaru from ReZero. Uh, so he discovers the truth about these shadows uh, at the moment where his childhood friend's little sister uh, pops out of two places at once. One of them has a gun and shoots him in the head. Um, and then, you know, he's he's rocketed back and, and has to go through the day all over again. But, like, the really cool thing, um, or, like, the one of the first really cool things that they do uh, to, like, offset a lot of the, like, lack of tension problem that is created by a time loop is every time he goes back, his starting point rolls forward a little. Yeah, it gets shorter and shorter. The loop gets more tight mm -hmm. and that keeps it fresh you know um i know a lot of people got like bored of that one major loop in re-zero that's like where a lot of people fell off re-zero was that one major loop 
where, where he's just going back like 15 yeah, times. Yeah, and in he a just row. keeps meeting Rem and Rom again over yeah, and yeah. over and over again. That's where a lot of people fell off that. So it's kind of nice to have that like refreshing, oh shit, where is he going to loop to next? Like there's a reason not to loop. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, it, like it, it, it becomes like a, a really, really important decision. Like he, he's not like Subaru where he's like scared to kill himself. Yeah. Um, like, like if, if a situation's dire enough, he has like the, the, the resolve to just eat himself. Um, anyway, another slight spoiler here. Yeah. But, um, something else that keeps the time loop enjoyable is the fact that the villains do find out about the time loop too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that... The villains are aware completely. And that creates like another level of, of danger with it. Not only are the loops getting shorter, but now the villain can like respond to what they did in the last loop. Yes, the villain so, is aware of the looping and also remembers everything they remember, which just it adds another good layer that doesn't And they they introduce make it feel that. Cheap. Yeah, yes. And they they introduce it at just the the right point too. Yeah. Um where like it, it's right when they're starting to figure out things about how the shadows work and how to identify them and fight them effectively, right? Um, and they're just figuring out what happened with Ushio, who's the childhood friend who died. Um, and like, uh, you know, what, what's going on with her shadow who's back and good, right? So right as soon as the characters start getting like a, a real advantage that can tip the scales in their favor, the uh, bad guys become aware of what they're doing in the loops. And like the really cool thing is they don't know the bad guys know. Um, Not right away, at least. Yeah, it, it takes, like, several more loops for them to catch on to that. Um, it's just got a lot of good slow reveals that keep it keep it exciting. And um, it also doesn't stay a mystery forever, which I like. And some people complained about it. They're like, oh, it fell off. It got, like, it got, it, it fell off was the most annoying thing I've heard about it. Because genres changing does not mean it fell off. Yeah, it just, it just means it changed up what it like, was doing to stay fresh. Just because it wasn't a mystery the entire time does not mean it fell off. It, the, it Yeah. Erased and, has that too. People are like, oh, it fell off because halfway through you know who the killer is or right away you know who it is. Genre change don't mean it fell off. Bitch. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it does maintain, like, some good mysteries. Well, it, it maintains the, a thriller. Yeah. It maintains the thrill. They, mm -hmm. You know, you lose the mystery because you find out they reveal everything, right? But it's still, it's still ending on cliffhangers. It's still got thrill to it. It's just more of an action thriller than a mystery thriller. Yeah. I mean, the the, the last mystery is who Forearms is. Mm -hmm. And, like, from that point forward, it becomes more, like, action-focused and more, like, try, the two sides trying to outthink each other. And, like, it does some really cool things where, like, when when the main character loops to solve one problem – he's not aware of another problem that's already happened and he's trying to loop as as fast as possible because like um the the time limit for when he can go back is constantly creeping forward um yep. and like he has like f a couple minutes to save somebody's life but he doesn't know something else is happening that like ends up killing somebody else on the other side of the island um so yeah it like it stays fresh. It doesn't have that like repetitive problem that you know. I, as much as we love Erased and and ReZero, and I love Higurashi, it it doesn't like. It, they can be repetitive. They yeah. can go through the same ideas and, and be a little bit difficult to watch because of that. Or feel and, cheap. You know? Yeah. Or or alternatively feel cheap because the you know the it's too easy for the characters yeah. to solve a problem. Um, and this like avoids that by uh, creating reasons for the loop to change without it changing too much, yeah. so that you know it, it loses that like fundamental fun causal logic that makes time loops satisfying. Um, it's just a really, really well constructed story. Yes. Um, also, like, the way the shadows fight is so cool. But that, that's what I mean, is it's, like, reminiscent of FMA to me in that way, just the way they fight and stuff. and Like, like transforming parts of their bodies. Yeah, yeah. Specifically. And the choreography around that, too, though. I love, it's just mm -hmm. watching them fight. Specifically, like, pride. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, because they're like kind of living shadows. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, God. I love that fight. That is one of the best fights in FMA. I think, you know, I've got a couple other ones on my list, but like, God, Alphonse versus Pride. Pride. That's like uh, <laughs> still peak animation. Yeah. Still yeah. Oh like. Oh, my God. So good. So good. And this has like a lot of that energy. Um, Ushio, like her main, because she's got long hair, her main thing that she deforms to fight is her hair. Um, so that's, you know, got uh, a real feeling of uh, uh, Milia from Guilty Gear and Philia from um, Skullgirls. Uh, you know, that, that sort of like, uh, that, that hair-based fighting style is, is really unique you don't see it a lot of places outside of fighting games um and it just it looks so cool when uh when her little sister's shadow like comes over to their side um but yeah like like she's got some really cool fighting styles too and like the oh man um hige forearms is just such an intimidating villain um yeah um we watched it dubbed and i gotta say he was he would have been, I think, a lot cooler in the Japanese version. He was cool and all, but holy fuck, is it hard to hear him? They, yeah. it's a, that that dubbing studio's first ever thing ever. For anime, and, at least. no, at all, at all. at all. It was their first thing. A lot of the voice actors, it was their first anime. I think Shinpei is the only one with like anime credits. Um, but it was that that studio's. Oh, they did Black Rock Shooter too. They did one of the Black Rock Shooter things. Probably the one um, that's on Disney. Yeah, but like. Whoever did the mixing on on Shide's voice, yeah, I I couldn't fucking understand a thing. I could I was like sitting there and I'm like, dangerous, isn't it? Since you're intruding so blithely upon this holy ritual of ours, I take it you must have defeated the other Mio. Uh, so you're you're the boss then, huh? <sighs> Who are you? Who the hell are you? Like, listening, trying to understand him and stuff. So I think he would have been a lot cooler and creepier in the dub. Um, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my biggest complaint. You could watch it dubbed. Um, I mean, but we, we were bro, also... you would have been so much cooler if you weren't. Yeah, they like tr they... quadruple up his voice and like it, it's it is it just... hard to hear. Part of that was probably the TV we were watching. Yeah, it but on. not everybody's going to be watching it. You can't have the expectation that it's only good on, on a, a sound system. Yeah, yeah, like that means it's not as good as it could be. Good mixing yeah. should sound good on regular consumer things, too. Yeah. You know, so uh, and I, I, I think we did at one point switch to the dub just to hear it or the and, sub sorry we switched to the japanese to to hear it and it just it was a lot clearer yeah, yeah 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 um so yeah the dub isn't bad though for what it's worth i'm throwing it out there but like fuck, dude you would have been so much scarier if i wasn't like triple focused on hearing each word you're saying yeah yeah that that was definitely so my little interjection about him that was my big complaint was like Bro, there's a way to do this like creepy tripled up voice, and that was this not was it. <laughs> this was not not the way. Yeah, a lot of the performances in the dub felt kind of flat. Like oh, Shinpei was good. Shinpei was was quite good, but that's because he's got a lot of um, um, anime experience. Yeah, uh, yeah and oh, what's the little sister's name? I'm blanking on her name right now. What's she doing outside? Mio. 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 Her name yeah. is Mio. Like like. Oh, oh, Ushio also had re a really good voice actress. Yeah, like, but even even Mio, they she wasn't like none of them were bad except for um the cop was yeah, he the he one was, was really... he the cop of the friend one of the two had a really like, like someone half of his someone lines, called like... in a favor <laughs> like um but no, I think that like I did see quite a few complaints about the dub and I actually don't think that. Well, you can tell it's like an, uh, one of their first things. It wasn't like, yeah, we weren't like, oh my god, we have to change this. Like the translation was pretty good. Too. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, yeah. was, it was like written well and stuff, and like, like that's what I mean. Is that's what can make it like unbearable, or like the direction on it wasn't bad. Like I, my big complaint was just a lot of the performances were really flat for a, you know, a live action or for an anime dub specifically. Like they, it, they just didn't feel like voice actors. 
like putting on putting their full weight into the performance but like I in some it. cases like with mio i think um she felt a little flat in her main version, but then Shadow Mio was so creepy because she had that, like, flat, cold affect. So there's, like, positives and negatives to the dub, I think. But, yeah. Um, you can yeah, also I, read the manga. It's quite, could, it's quite expensive, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and not. I don't think there's a way. I think Kindle might be the only way to read it online, which fucking sucks. Udon! Um... But yeah, the manga is really good too. It's really pretty, um, like the but, arts. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Oh, Ooh. hey, that's real pretty too. Yeah. Nice. Um, is yeah. that was that art from the mangaka or art from the anime? That looks like oh, I no manga. Yeah. Manga it looks like the cover. Yeah, I, the team at OLM did a really good job of yeah, translating every, the manga style to so the good. anime. Like, oh man, there's so much sakuga in it. Um, but yeah, it just really keeps you on your toes so yep. well. There's always like... It's the first anime that I felt the I don't care that it's 1 a.m. Let's put on another episode for in a while. Like. Yeah. I And what I really like is how like they have the time loop apps aspect, but instead of taking away tension, which it often does, it like adds that feeling that like there's consequences for dying, but at the same time, like somebody can come out of nowhere and kill anybody including the fucking protagonist uh and and it creates that sense that like nobody's safe which is really important for like a body snatcher story where like you don't know who to trust and you you know don't know uh how to protect yourself to a certain degree it is there's it's just so much that it does well it's just fucking good it's just really good give it a chance yeah. I think it won Annie Anime Trending's second best of the year or something. I think it came in number two for their anime of the year. Behind Cyberpunk, I think. Or something. I don't, I don't yeah. remember what won there first, but I know they did get some kind of deserved award, award because they did not consider it in the anime awards. They didn't consider it? I mean, I don't even, I don't know. Did they? <laughs> you you no, were the... No, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, I was one of the judges. Like, I think it was. It was definitely in the nominees. But, but there was yeah. no way for anyone to have seen it. Yeah. I mean, it didn't drop on Disney Plus until December, end of December. Yeah, so um, I, I couldn't really, like, say anything about yeah. it when I was voting or anything. Please watch it! Your turn. Please watch it. Um, I know you said one of us was going to do a video on it. I don't know if... I, you you would have to do a second channel video because it doesn't have the pull for a main channel video, but you don't really have time for a second channel video. And I wanted to do one, but that's I'm not good at that kind of thing. Like uh, the deep analysis. Yeah, I like got nothing to say. Like besides, watch it, <laughs> please. Yeah. Pretty um, please. I mean, let please us know watch in, it. Yeah. Um, let me know in the comments if you if deserve like so to... much. It deserves so much. It's so good. Yeah, it? <sighs> it does. It does deserve. If it gets enough hype, maybe we'll get the game. There's a game on Switch. So God, I maybe. want to play that. But we can't because uh, it's not in English. But, yeah, so so if if you want to see me do a video, I, I will do a video. I'll try to do something. Or me. Or Yazzie, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I've been struggling to write it because it's, like, it's one of those things where even saying as much as it's ReZero meets Invasion of the Body Snatchers, spoils some of the magic of like that first episode where you don't know what's going on and like why is Mio standing outside what the fuck is going on there right like it's really good at like crafting that creepy town vibe and sucking you into its world speaking of the real island that it takes place on it, doesn't have any inhabitants on it i don't think um but you can go there to view old military to like walk through all the old military tunnels and stuff it was like the, an the artillery fort, fort, the fort, fort. And tunnels in the show are real yeah uh, not um, the not though. not in that exact configuration but there are you can go there um and you can walk through the, you can exhaust yourself walking through the tunnels um the real it's a, a different name it's a different name um yeah i'm just throwing that out there anyway <laughs> yeah no it's it, it also also in addition to that those tunnels or, or those that fort is like widely considered to be the best place to do castle in the sky cosplay. Except they can't say that. 
they they in like the like official tourism thing or whatever they can't be like it looks like laputa stuff um but it does yeah it, it... they like use some some like oh it's it's a popular place for people to take photos reminiscing a favorite movie or something like that but it is it does it looks so ghibli yeah like cuz it's just got like old rotting away rusted metal that's melting into the ground essentially mhm cool place it's it's yeah it, it, it i want to go there we want to go there it it's i want to go to there as they say but like yeah it, it it's really cool and and watch our podcast so that we can have an excuse to uh, use the funds to go to Japan and go there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Come on. Please, please pay for our vacation. Please. please. Um, no, well, no. Watch our stuff so AdSense will pay for our vacations. Yeah. Please. Anyway, anyway, moving on to people who are getting fired versus people who did not get fired. Um, Takahiro Sakurai, the voice actor, the famous voice actor. He does Cloud. He does Rohan, I think. I don't know. The famous voice actor of these anime fame, he'll be here. Right here, yes. Um, most importantly, though, Cloud. That is, like, the most, you know. Um, he cheated on his wife that nobody knew he had. Um, he cheated on her for 10 years. With, and that's not funny, but it is impressive. It is impressive. I would like us to clarify this, that it's fucked up, right? Cheating on anybody is fucked up. Cheating on them for 10 years is fucked up. And the other people involved didn't know. It wasn't like a, a, I don't care that you're married, Mr. Sakurai. Like, this lady also thought she was going to marry him. So it's fucked up. There was, like, two different ladies. Yeah, I think so. Or, um, or maybe three girlfriends. He had, like, he was, he was, he was balling. doing he was, the full arch. He was, he was balling and not in the good way. Like, But, um, like, like but honestly, the time management you is get, very impressive. Yeah, you can't be a tiny bit disgusted, impressed. By the fact that he pulled that shit off for ten years, while being one of the most prolific and, and yeah. well known a- anime or voice actors in the entire yeah, industry. like he had his own talk show, which is one of the writers or whatever for his talk show was was one of the cheaties, and like she legit they didn't they not only didn't know about his wife, but she like legitimately thought she was going to marry him. So like, fucked up on a lot of levels. Yeah, but also but also very like, impressive, like. Bro. Bro, holy shit. Anyway, so he's getting removed from all of his roles. He's yeah. already been, I believe, recast on um, quite a few anime that haven't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's losing all of his roles for that, which... Fair, to a degree. To a you know, degree, like... right? Like, it's not illegal. It's not like he lives somewhere where it is illegal, but he does live somewhere that is big on scandals, right? On scandals being reflected on the company right yeah which is why he's getting recast and things it's like whoa we don't want the scandal guy representing our anime yeah um which would make a little more sense if they didn't constantly look the other way when actual real the consistency there's a lack of consistency because there are people who are like convicted of buying literal cp having no, like so like a lot of it like mountains of we'll it, get there and we're just welcomed were back suspected of distribution yes somebody we're talking about fucking raruni kenshin watsky yeah watsky of raruni kenshin fame is, is still he's getting a new anime still gets to his, he was welcomed his back his, his manga jump. was only put on hiatus and i'm sorry to your king but oda like congratulated him on his return this guy is convicted not just like i i hear that he had cp but it was like technically within the rules so they had to let him go he was convicted like big time and they they extra looked into him because they were concerned that he was distributing because he had over 100 different dvds right and he said to the police that he loves middle 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 school girls specifically junior and middle school girls yeah um also the the and Welcomed back. Have some consistency, okay? I, mean, I get letting someone go because they cheated for 10 years, but consistency. I mean, like, there is a consistency in how light they tend to be on offenders like that. But, but, there, but there I'm, not also... talking about, I'm not talking about how light they are on offenders. I'm talking about the, the, the fact that they are given back. They're, it's they're... not about the police and how light they are on them, right? Yeah. I'm not talking about the fine, right? 
Yeah. It's not like it's not like what's his name got fined. It's not like Sakura got fined or whatever, right? He is going to court over it apparently. Yeah. Um apparently his 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 tenure mistress is like suing him for eighty thousand dollars US or something. I mean the but divorce is probably gonna take a lot of money. That too, that too. <laughs> but no, I'm talking about his mistress was suing him, um, the writer or whatever. Anyway, um yeah, no, I'm not I'm not talking about the punishment from the legal system. That's separate. Yeah. But he was punished and he was convicted. It wasn't just a rumor. Right. Yeah. And they're not waiting until Sakurai loses his court case or gets divorced to be like, OK, you got convicted. So we're or not convicted, but you got tried against. Therefore, judgmented. You got legally judgmented. Yeah. They're just um, axing him from everybody. Yeah. Right. They're so like everything. Yeah. Ha- have. Yeah. So I'm not talking about the, the legal side of it or like the, the consistency of letting them off the hook too easy for that, because that's a different conversation. That's a scandal. Yeah, I, Tra- I, CP is a scandal. Yeah, I know it, it's a huge scandal, but I like I think it ties into like the culture, or at least the people who are in charge of the culture, not taking it as seriously yep. as they should. Like yep. the the um, the writer of a- Act Age who got um, fired and has stayed fired because he actually like molested somebody, like like real creepy shit. I mean, you know, obviously Watsky's real yeah. creepy shit, but like, but he got like a minimal sentence, like slap on the wrist fine because the court was like, well, the punishment of having your series canceled was enough punishment from society for what you did. And it's, it, there's like, yeah, there's a, there's like a cultural aspect there that, mm-hmm. but like the consistency is, is wild. Like there was a guy on, uh, one of the actors for Yakuza did coke once and was pulled out of the game like they patched yeah, him out, oh my God. out of the game uh that he was already in they didn't just fire him from future roles they replaced him and like coded like 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 had had the the character model for his face replaced with another actor it, it's consistency come on yeah it, it's it's wild um but yeah yeah that but, was just like something that's been slowly being announced because every once in a while like every couple weeks you're seeing Sakurai replaced for this role Sakurai replaced for that role and every time I'm like okay fine but the Kenshin anime stares still at happening. Kenshin not only is it still happening but his manga's back yeah I keep getting cat hair all over my face because the fucking it's shedding time it, the the microphone I'm sure you can see is fucking covered in cat hair it's like every time I get close enough that you can hear my lovely and beautiful voice I'm getting a face full of cat hair. Anyway. Okay. There was a tweet going around this morning, which I have not source checked on. I'm I'm just believing everything I see on Twitter.com. But apparently, apparently, Michael B. Jordan has stated his um, anime that you should start with if you're new to anime. And we'll put them on screen between us. But here they are. One Piece, Dragon Ball, Naruto, Bleach, and Hunter x Hunter. Thoughts? You seem like you have thoughts. I I just this is the same series over and over again, essentially. No, they're not. They are. It's just the same. I know they're not the same, but it's the same formula. No. Over and over and over. How to get people away from anime unless you want them to be into shonen and shonen only? That's one yeah. or two of those from that list, maybe, and none of them are like bad anime. But if someone sits there and watches one and then the other and they're like, I don't know if this one's for me. And then the other, I don't like. Yeah. I, if you're a young boy, I would say that. that yeah, but we're are... not just targeting young boys with this. Right. Yeah. It doesn't say for young boys or, or you know, young action lovers looking to get into anime. I think that there are other anime that perhaps that, sh- that list is very not diverse. And mm-hmm. it is very shown in, and like, if those were the only anime I was shown right now, I would be like, I don't fucking like this shit. Goodbye. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I also like. It would reinforce to me that 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 anime is for kids who want to believe it. <laughs> yeah, and a- as anime recommendations specifically, I think that you know they're kind of weak. Um, you know, like like a- a- for memory oh, as okay. as. As manga, I would like absolutely say like, 
One Piece is a great place to start. Dragon Ball is probably the best place you could possibly start. And Dragon Ball is a great TV show too. But like, God, Naruto has some of the worst filler and padding of anything I've ever seen, second only to Bleach. And like, as an as an anime, you know, One Piece is also like really hard to get through in a lot of places. That's what um, I mean. Is none of these are, are bad on their own. Yeah. But to suggest this list to somebody who is like, I want to get into anime. Let me see what it's got. You're like, I would say, I would say, as anime specifically. Hunter Hunter and Dragon Ball are the ones on there that I would say, yeah, go for it. Those are like really uh, just unambiguously good for the most part and will uh, give you a lot of stuff to get hyped about. One Piece uh, and Bleach, uh, I would say, you know, read the manga. Um, and Naruto, I'd say read the manga too. But like, I, I, I wouldn't even put Naruto that high on the list, especially if you're also recommending Dragon Ball because like, Exactly. Naruto's like the one that turned it into a formula that was super repeatable. Yeah. Um, and it just, yeah. If if I was gonna put the list together personally, um, I, I mean, I would. I want to say keep One Piece for the for the manga, but like, if it's an anime recommendation, I'd say Hunter Hunter and Dragon Ball are good. Full Metal Alchemist is probably like like the best possible middle ground for. <laughs> Original or Brotherhood? Which one should be on the list? Uh, I would say Brotherhood probably for... for Attaboy. <laughs> even though I really like the original and I think the original is very good, I would say Brotherhood is the, the more like accessible entry-level one. Arguably, it should be on the intro to manga list too. Like the, the yeah. first manga to try list too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've seen... Like, I, I saw the discussion around this on the internet to an extent, and people were suggesting some absolute, like, isekai dog shit and, and like, you know, like, like the, the stuff that, that makes people, that turns people off of anime forever, you know? Like, like yeah, th there's so much, like, great and accessible anime out there, you know? Like, I want to point to Rakugo Shinju because that's good, but, you know... The, Never mind, that, that stick with Shonen. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Um, but like, yeah, if I, so if I was going to try to build a list, like that one's good for like 16 year olds. Yeah. 16 for 16 year, old year, year olds. And it's good for like people who want to get invested, invested. Cause if you get sucked into any one of those shows, you are probably going to be hooked on anime for life. Right. But like, yeah, because you like the basicest of basic formulas, you know, you like the, the basic roots of or, or you enjoy deep socioeconomic explorations of the greater systemic problems with the world, and you like One Piece. Um, but yeah, like, like, uh, yeah. If I'm trying to think, I would say. Yeah, I don't have like a better list than him. Yeah. I... No, I just also think that that list is a little. I mean, all of those are ones that definitely have gotten a lot of young men into anime on like a permanent basis. So on that ground, I'd say- And also people from the early 2000s. Yes. <laughs> yeah, on, on that ground, I'd say they're good starting points. Um, although like, like Hunter Hunter is a good starting point because it's an extremely well-told story, but it's also hard to appreciate how good Hunter Hunter is until you've read like a whole mess of shonen and you like understand like, you have the expectations that uh, Togashi is constantly setting up and subverting. Um, you know, kind of like how how I think mean, Chainsaw Man's actually. I, I would say Chainsaw Man is probably like. I mean, it's got for a, it's got too many like anime tropes though, like about the the the, the titty grabbing and yeah. You know, I feel I'm, like well, I mean, that's all like tying into like a. a really interesting character development and and it's not just trying to subvert the tropes for yeah, subverting but, the tropes but it can sake, be off-putting because of those yeah tropes. yeah you're right it's definitely got some anime bullshit that yeah, people would yeah. read as anime bullshit so like, I, th I think a good intro to to anime anime needs to be very sparse or even void of anime bullshit i mean i like i think it de what i was going to say about chainsaw man specifically is like i think it depends 
on what your tastes already are. Like, for a typical person, Chainsaw Man's maybe not the best intro point, but, like, if you are a fan of horror movies, Chainsaw Man is amazing, right? Um, and it, it like... You know, I, I think good anime recommendations largely depend on what you're already into. But if you're looking for, like, a blanket th sheet of... Or a blanket, like, list of, of five, like, really good intro points... Um, FMA? FMA is good. I think Dragon Ball is about as close to optimal as it gets. It's, it's like, eternally classic. Um, I don't know about like i would say hunter hunter is the most accessible on that list but also like one that you'll appreciate more the deeper you get into it um one of the most popular responses under that tweet was jojo jojo's jojo's good jojo is really good f as an introduction because like each story is you know self-contained and there's like a different flavor for each one so i it, also it, think that it's a good intro to anime bullshit without being overbearing on the anime bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's got a lot of anime bullshit in it. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, but it's, like, played in a way that, like, an average uh, person will... Not question it because there's just too much to question. And they're having fun. And, yeah, yeah everything's bizarre. <laughs> yeah. So, like, like... I do think the JoJo is actually a good segue into anime bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a good inoculation against, uh, against it. Uh, plus, a lot of... Uh, bullshit anime with heavy anime bullshit are very deeply influenced by Jojo. Um, yeah, and I mean, that fits with Dragon Ball because, you know, everything was influenced by it the same way. Um, I think Haikyuu could potentially be like a really good Vouch. intro point. Vouch. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the perfect intro to sports anime. Yeah. But also, like, th there needs to be some good, like, romance in there. That's what I mean. Like what's, like, a what's a good well balanced for people who just don't like shonen that's like you're gonna turn people away like i, I fr like i want to say fruits basket is a good one but like there that's also like a hard entry point and yeah. there's like a lot to invest and in. i love fruits basket but i don't i, I want to say kaguya sama but like that's i mean kaguya sama does avoid a lot of anime bullshit and has like a really true good like like balance of romance and comedy but like also, that's one of those ones like Hunter Hunter where I think you get the most out of it if you've already seen like a few anime and you know what it's like lampooning and subverting to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, although, I, I, yeah, I think, you know, like Hunter Hunter, the characters and the story are strong enough that it could carry that. Would you say ReZero? Because that's got heavy anime bullshit, but it's like... I, I think it's got too much anime bullshit. Yeah. I think that not only does it have too much anime bullshit, shit but it's also yeah no I think that that like I, yeah. see my, my opinion on that is clouded by the fact that I f fucking love ReZero but like I, yeah. don't, I, I don't I don't know if I could like and I feel like the the that like long time loop really puts people off of, of that kind of stuff so. yeah. but I don't know what a good intro to Isekai is Good intro to Isekai. Um, I mean, Without, yeah. you know, the, the like. Escaflone? And that was our intro to yeah, Isekai. Yeah, so I think we might be extent. a little bit. Yeah, or actually. D Digimon. Actually, you know, like, if you're a young. for If you're trying to get a young kid into yeah, anime, I think though. Digimon Adventure and. I do think Escaflone is not a bad option, though. Like, it is. It's a tight, well-told story. It's got one of the best yeah, female there, there, protagonists. There's no, like, why is this happening in it? You know? Yeah. Like, everything makes sense. To, it's good. Yes, yeah, Scafloni. Like, like uh, Ascendance of a Bookworm. But that's, you know, that doesn't really introduce you to what a lot of isekai is about. But, I mean, that is also helpful because it's free of the anime bullshit. Um, yeah, that's... Escaflone is also a pretty good introduction to Mecca. Um, oh, yeah, no, for sure. Escaflone. I would say the Gundam. Escaflone and Build Fighters are my two. Like, if Escaflone doesn't get you into it, Build Fighters will. Yeah. I would say the Gundam movies are also, like, like the, the recap movies specifically. Like, they're crusty, but, like, in terms of, you know, presenting, like, like what and I, I'm, I'm making this face as somebody who really likes Gundam. 
Yeah, I mean, but like Gundam has been like a jumping on point. I mean, for obviously, a lot of yes, but. You think they're know. too crusty at this point? To... Don't, that's not even the word I would use. Uh, why would you use that word? That's like a really negative word. Janky is a much better word. I just because they're old, they've but got the, crust on them. No, that's not what that means to describe a series. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the ways it's used. I would no, I don't think so. I don't know. Shit on Jeff in the comments below, or shit on me. Pick one. Just, um, um, I think of it as old and has crust on it, but I guess it could also mean you're thinking like dust, dust, perhaps dusty. You know, like like you know, it's it's <laughs> digging a hole. I, 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 yeah, digging it, a it, hole. It, it might be a cum thing. I might I might be misunderstanding the. I'm fundamentally misunderstanding that slang. Uh, <laughs> now that you say it, I had not doubted my use of crusty up to this point. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. I guess I can't think of a good reason why the Gundam movies wouldn't be, other than the fact that they are a little old and off-putting to people who think they don't like Mecha. That's yeah. the problem. I think that for people who are destined to like Mecha, they're perfect. Yeah. But for people who think they don't like Mecha, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I, I just... I mean, they map really well to like people who already like the Expanse, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's um, yeah. The people who are destined to like Mecca. Maybe like I want to say Cowboy Bebop, but like Cowboy Bebop's one of those ones where it's very good, and I think anybody can appreciate it whether they like anime or not. But like, if you get into that, it makes it harder to appreciate a lot of anime that you might go to next because it's a so good and b so far from anime tropes and bullshit in like a lot of ways um and it, it doesn't it's not necessarily representative of what most anime does for the same reason that i'd kind of say, like like attack on titan is like something that would jump to mind as that's very popular and it, it gets lots of people into their first taste of anime but like if you like that you're more likely to enjoy game of thrones than yeah. uh Dragon yeah, Ball. it all comes down to knowing what somebody's into to begin with. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I really do think it depends, you know? Like, if, if you're... I'm saying like a lot here. Uh, if I was, was going to put together, like, my personal list of anime that I think sell what is cool about anime really well in, like, a minimal amount of time, not a you know you get invested for a really long period of time like i think full metal alchemist would be on there that's that's a good medium but be between like showing people the advantages of like long form shown in storytelling but also not overstaying its welcome or falling into repetitive tropes um i would say like for for an older audience bacano would be like a really good one because oh, that's yeah, like that's a, a good tight one. 13 episodes it's got incredible action um you know it, it does some crazy stuff with its story structure that that makes it um fun to watch and then go back to later when you appreciate more of the anime stuff that it's doing um I don't, like part of me wants to say erased because that one is is really like a very tight story but then also, like, it does have what some pretty heavy anime bullshit. Um, and, or the appearance of anime bullshit, I would say. It doesn't really lean into it, but, like, it, it, it might turn somebody off yeah, yeah. before they, you know, get into, into it. So, like, I don't know about that. So we got FMA, Bacano. Um, is Bison Wolf? No, it's just naked. Yeah, but she she's artistically naked. <laughs> um, maybe that one's a little definitely made in abyss. Yeah, 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 made in abyss. That's a good place to start people on anime. We gotta we gotta like do that separate thing about the made in abyss reviews on Amazon from like oh my very very normal people who thought. Like, it was just a fun kids show based on the art style. And there's some, yeah, we got to do that. Um, we get... Potentially, arguably, One Punch Man. One Punch Man. I'm not a huge fan of it, but, like. Yeah, it is It is good. Like, I, 
I would say either One Punch Man or JoJo, depending for like that string of like anime bullshit that's so over the top. I think if you watch it, yeah, yeah. I think either one of those after Dragon Ball, though, because like Dragon Ball sets like your baseline expectations. Uh, I mean, no, One Punch Man. One Punch Man is is like a pretty good Haikyu, by the way. We said yeah, Haikyu. Haikyu, I would say, spot. is a really good good intro point and example. I'm trying to think of like a romance anime that like Toradora. Yeah, yeah. Toradora might be a good one. Like you know, it is a little bit of a harem, and it is mildly bullshitty, but. Um, just looking through. Sweetness um, and Lightning. Sweetness and Lightning is a great one. Um, no just, anime bullshit there? Absolutely no anime bullshit. But you, it needs to come with a disclaimer to not trust this trope. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah like do, not, you, do not walk away from this series trusting this father-daughter trope. Do, do not. Yeah. If you watch Sweetness and Lightning and you enjoy Sweetness and Lightning. <laughs> Never. For the love of God, do not look for any anime like Sweetness and Lightning. It really does just depend on, like, what you're into. Like, if you're, you know, for you, if you weren't already into anime, knowing how much you like, um thrillers and mysteries and, and crime procedurals and stuff like that even though it's a big investment and largely considered esoteric i would say that monster would be like one of the best possible entry points because like it's just such a well-constructed thriller but yeah all right i'll just yeah, sit here I, i've had to pee since the podcast started and i've been being very brave about it <laughs> but i can be brave no longer <laughs> all right so uh while we're here I, I think that's as good a place as any to like cap off that discussion um as you can tell the topic of uh gateway anime if you want to put it that way is contentious and challenging um with that said uh let's completely segue away um we're going to talk about what we've been doing uh, this week, uh, and I'm gonna start by by talking about what I've been doing this week because Yazzie's not here. Um, I played through uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. Uh, that was fucking amazing. Uh, if you haven't picked that up for your Switch yet, it it like feels the way that Metroid Prime felt. Uh, decade and a half ago like it, it's really just one of the best remasters ever they didn't just update the graphics although they, man they sure did update the graphics um but they also like changed the control scheme to be a little more uh in in conformity with contemporary first person shooter design so like you can actually aim with the analog stick and fire with the trigger instead of having to like lock on with the left button and, and hammer a which you know worked for the original metroid prime and, and the way that it was designed but like man it it, it just feels good to play as a shooter uh, god that getting lost in that world was like a really good i've been here the whole time vacation heard that ex entire thing you should just you should I've, like I've, that's like, what i was gonna do don't tell the people what i'm gonna do <laughs> Yeah, no, Metroid Metroid Prime Remastered was just, like, God, it, it was such an incredible, like, immersive experience. And I, was, I was telling Jeff that while I've never played a Metroid game, um, I do remember the very first time I found out that Samus Aran was, in fact, a girl. And it was because I was playing Smash Brothers and, um, like, original Smash Brothers. <laughs> and when you electrocute her with Pikachu, you can see her boobs. I mean, not literally her boobies, but you can see that she's got a female frame under there. And if you pause it at just the right time. You can see, like, the polygonal outline of, uh, boobies. of a Laura Croft pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can tell she's got, got honkers under there. That was like a... Because Samus Aaron. Aaron must be a boy. Yeah, I mean, I like, I remember... I've, I don't, I've never played a Metroid, but I do remember my life being shook when I found out that Samus Aaron had titties under there. I... There was, like, this big lull in Metroid games coming out in the whole N64 era. There was nothing except for Smash Bros. So our generation was 
introduced to um to samus as a concept through smash and it like the fact that she was a girl was like mind blowing. I, I was like, at first, I was like, oh yeah, I love that cool dude Samus. When yeah, I was like, Mega Man's a dude with a cannon on his hand, and Samus Aaron is a man named Aaron with a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, there were like, I remember there being schoolyard arguments about whether that was true. Yeah, like, no, I exactly, and then they would say, you go home and you you electrocute her, and you got to pause it at just the right time, and you can see she's got boobies. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. I um, like Smash got me interested in it, and then when Fusion and Prime came out, like, uh, like Prime, I didn't get as into when I was a kid. Like I got part way through it, and I never finished it just because I felt I was a little too young to appreciate the Metroidvania design at the time. Um, and like Fusion, I played all the way through because that's a more linear and and designed experience. But um. Yeah, Prime didn't grab me, but like Prime Two, I was just like obsessed with. I'd play the the uh, split screen multiplayer with my friends constantly, um, and you know by like the standards of Goldeneye and Halo, it wasn't exactly peak. But I I thought it was fun. I I I, I have like very fond memories of that. So like, I really hope that they do. Metroid Prime 2 remastered the same way that they did Prime 1. I hope they just like drop it out of the blue too. Uh, I think that that that's that was really cool. How how it was just like, hey, this is happening, and people were like, whoa, and it's like you can already download it. Whoa, you know the the problem with Metroid is it's never had like hype around it ever. You know, like like there's the the hardcore audience, but Nintendo's never been able to make it take off the way that the Zeldas uh, and the the especially Mario's have. Yeah, um, it's never the only game that people play. Yeah, until Dread. Dread was like the killer app for the Switch for a little while there. It it was like like it, back in 2021, Dread was for a little while all people were talking about, and it's the best selling Metroid game. But, like, I think it's really smart how they're allowing people to get reintroduced to the world. Um, you know, the fact that Super Metroid's already available on the virtual console along with Metroid Fusion, with, which just came back, is, is, you know, it's becoming a very, very accessible series for anybody who's already subscribed to Switch Online. And, like, you know, I, I think arguably it's, it's some of the best software that you can play in each of those uh, thing so I I'm excited to see Metroid getting more attention. Um, I hope that when they figure out all the behind the scenes bullshit with Prime Four and finally, you know, get that out, that that you know people will be really hyped for it on a level that they haven't been before. Um, and I'm hoping that these Prime remasters will be like spaced out to give people time to you know play through it. 100% it, replay it a couple times maybe, and then like drop another one and keep the hype train going up until four hits. Because, you know, Prime's also got like, uh, I mean, you don't know because you haven't played any of the games, but Prime's got like uh, more involved. I mean, I, I wouldn't say more involved because uh, Metroid's always been the most narrative driven core Nintendo franchise. Um, but like, it's got a lot of good narrative hooks, and I think if they pace it out well, that will really keep people engaged. You know, it was, like, considered Half-Life tier one of the best shooters of all time when it first came out, um, but being stuck on the GameCube, people just never were exposed to it. Um, so, yeah, I I'm really excited for that. Uh, other than that... Um, I've been playing uh, the Game Boy games on the Virtual Console out of nostalgia. Uh, Minish Cap, very, very good. Um, you know, I, I, that was like one of my big childhood Zeldas. Oh my God, speaking yeah. of Kirby Tilt and Tumble! Kirby Tilt and Tumble's coming to the motherfucking I don't know when, GBC. but anyway. You've also been playing some stuff on the Only one, I, and only for like two days until I got as frustrated as I did when I was a child. Um, Wario Land 3? Yeah. Yeah, it's Land. 
Um, I only, I just remember the giant Wario going like this at the time. So I know it's Wario three, but that that's my childhood trauma is is the the cartridge with Wario like this. Um, that game made me cry so much when I was a kid. It was so hard. I didn't have many Game Boy games. We were not like Cha Ching rich, so we had to like, you know, there was multiple children, so I didn't get a Game Boy game every time I wanted one. Um, so that was one of the ones that I got. Fuck, man. It was so hard for somebody my age and my IQ. <laughs> um, and my, like my level of problem solving skills. It was so hard. The day and the night thing. I mean, you tried it. Um, I, yeah, I, it's a challenging game. Anyway, so I, I did play that for a couple of days after it got released for the nostalgia. And I made it less than halfway before I got so lost and frustrated that I gave up. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it is fun. I'm just. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> you but, know? I mean, you've, you've been like uh, hardcore into Splatoon. I mean, I've, I'm always. We said that when three came out. So I, I, that's like my game. That is the only game I play. Um, <laughs> that is my game. I play a lot of Splatoon. Uh, She's very good at it. I wouldn't say very good, but I'm good at it. Um, been been practicing with the uh, tri stinger recently. The the uh, bow and arrow, just because it's hard to do. So it's you know. Anyway, uh, no, but I've been reading lots of manga. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have this, because I'm going to tell you guys about some of the manga that I've been reading uh, in, like, really quick succession. I got nothing but a sentence to say about each of them. Um, but I've been doing this thing where in order to keep track of the manga I've been reading, because I'm very forgetful. I'll put a little picture here of stuff. But um, I've been, like, writing it down. Just I've put, been pasting uh, little Polaroids that I take of them um, and she's, writing she's down. She's got this really cool Polaroid printer that... Uh... Yeah, so I've been writing that down and keeping track. And, and it's working. Because before we started, I was sitting upstairs and I was like, shit, what manga do I want to say I've been reading? And then I was like, I've been writing them all down. I don't have to think. So anyway, here's some of the manga that I've been reading that I think you guys should read. Um, one that I just read a couple nights ago that I was reading the newest chapter release of. Not that it's like, this is not the newest chapter release. It's the newest translated one. Um, this one is only fan translated. Um, but it is called, I'm going to put it here because I can't, it's hard to say. Embarrassing interruption, but it's actually called A Story About an Offline Meetup Between an Otaku and a Yakuza. Here it is here. Um, really cute manga about a two otaku who meet. They're like Twitter friends, and they finally meet. Um, and one of them is your average quiet office lady, and the other guy is a Yakuza member, and like not secretly a Yakuza member. Like He's like the caricature of a Yakuza guy. And everyone's scared of him and stuff. And um, they're both very passionate about. I thought it was a BL, but I think it might be a girl's love. I, it's hard to tell. Um, there's not. It's like it's just like a vague series. Um, and it's just like a fun slice of life manga about them becoming friends. And uh, he is a doujin artist, not of the not safe for work kind. Um, and he's like nobody will buy my doujin because it's like his fan his fan book. Because he's so scary looking. The only people who have bought them are his boss and his underlings. <laughs> um, he's only sold five copies. And she reads it. She's like, oh, my God, this is so good. Um, so they decide that they're going to go to, um, like, doujin events, um, like, like comic hit style thing. And they, they sell his book. And it's super popular. And it's very funny. Um, one of my favorite jokes that I just read was that uh, he posted on Twitter. Like, he posts a picture of the – she takes a picture of the, the book for him. She's like, watch. People are going to love it. And he posts it on his Twitter being like, hey, I made this fan book. And it blows up. And they're like, oh, my God, so many people are interested in it. We did it. And then underneath the tweet, he does, you know, when you when you promo something underneath the tweet, <laughs> he promos his loan service. <laughs> and suddenly everyone's like, what the fuck? We're not buying this book. And then she's like, shit, shit, shit. And she locks his Twitter. <laughs> she privates his Twitter. It's a great manga, really fun. Um, unfortunately, not in English um, officially yet. But there is a translation group working on it, so. And hopefully it'll get. An yes, uh, it, it's it's. I tried to order it. I've been ordering. That's what I've been doing is in order to like help the manga that don't have official translations yet. Um, I've been buying them off Amazon just to have copies of them. Um, and unfortunately, this one is completely sold out on Amazon, which I guess good for them. But um, one I did buy off Amazon and it's up in my office is. So it's I want to be praised by a gal gamer. The way that you wrote it looks like Home Rare Rection. I, that's what, 
I don't have neat writing, and that's why the pictures that you're going to see of my book are blurred. Okay, can you stop looking at them too? I'm shy. Um, this Your writing is beautiful. It's not. It's not. Don't lie to me. It's, You've seen my writing. It, mine is on par with yours. No, like, it's not. It is. Anyway, um, this is just like a, a romance comedy about um, a guy who wants to become good at Apex, but he's not Bpex. But he's not good at it, so he hires a pro teacher to teach him how to play Bpex, and she's a cute gyaru. She's a very cute gyaru um, who uh, goes to his school and is a year older than him, and she's a pro, and he really just wants to be good at the game. So... Um, yeah, it's just like a romantic comedy. Doesn't it fun. turn into a harem? Sort of, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, it, it, there's kind of a harem thing going on. It's not quite super established. There's just like a childhood friend who's in the mix now. Um, fun. It's just like a fun, like, I wouldn't even qualify it as etchy, but it's got, you know, she's a, she's a gyaru, so she's like titties in your face sometimes, kind of like bent over things sometimes. Um, yeah, it's cute. It's cute. I've been enjoying it. Um yeah, I remember. Another one, one I read that is really good that just um, released the cover picture, like the official. It, it's not in print yet, but they just released just this morning. They're like, here's what the cover is going to look like. Called The Guy She Was Interested In Wasn't a Guy At All. Yeah, you showed me that one. I, it looked really cool with the it's way that they so colored it. It's so stylish. They do the like green paneling with it. It's, it's Stylish is the best word I have for it. The art is really good. Um, it's a story about a gyaru again. I'm biased, <laughs> a little biased. Uh, it's a story about a gyaru who gets a crush on this really cool guy who works at the record store. Um, she's got like a different taste in music, unlike her friends, because they're all gyarus. Um, and she gets a crush on this really cool, aloof guy at the record store. And it turns out that the guy at the record store is actually her uh, seat, the guy, the girl who sits beside her, her like seat mate, who she's never talked to before, super quiet, super shy, blend into the crowd uh, girl. And uh, it's a story about that, and it's really good because it doesn't, like, drag on the whole—they're not, like, hiding the fact that it's actually a girl's love story. Um, so, yeah, not very far in does she find out that the girl—the the, the guy at the record store is actually the girl who sits next to her. And it's just got this, like, budding, cute romance of them being like, oh, shit, I think I might have a crush on her. Oh, I might have a crush on her. And it's, it's good. It's stylish. It's fun. It's, like, a realistic high school romance. Um, give that one a read. I'm not going to talk about all of them I read. Um, if you have 60 pages worth of time, a really good one shot I read was Nene, Nene san. Not going to tell you anything other than the fact that it ruined my day in a good way. Like, you know, it, it, I, I knew it was going to ruin my day, but it ruined my day. It's a one shot. Um, last one, I guess I will mention is this is one I tweeted about um, a while ago, but Killer in Love. Uh, it is like a murdery story it's it's a murdery story about a guy who is sad and lonely and he falls in love with this really cute pretty nice girl and uh simps a little too hard for her and there's killing people involved and um it's kind of short it was like 20 chapters or something 30 chapters um it has a gore tag you've been warned um you said the ending kind of fell off yeah but i can't really i want to recommend it to people anyway because it was the author's health that dragged it down. So there was no, you know, it's not like they just like ran out of ideas or got canceled. Yeah. Like they, their heart, the health, their health went downhill and they couldn't continue it anymore. So they wrapped it up and you could like tell that they had more in there that they wanted to tell. You could tell that it needed another like 10 chapters or whatever. Um, so like, I want to recommend it anyway, even though the ending was kind of like, Oh, like that's it. Like I, it was a very unsatisfying ending but I don't think that should discount the author's work because they got sick and they, they, you know, they had to just fast forward a bit. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's what I've been reading. That's for the clout. All right. Fat stuff. This is Junkrat. She has three legs and one eye and one brain and one brain cell. We love her though. Say goodbye, Jeff. This, this is it. This is how we say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Um, take us out. Junkrat. Can you get, can you... She's just gonna... hi, baby. Oh man, there's so much fluff. She's like she's she's hardcore shedding, shedding like right crazy, now. Crazy. I'm gonna... I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody, Junkrat. I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say goodbye, Junkrat. She just wants off the table. 
She wants to be back in her basket so she bad. Can go. She might go. That's it. That's that's the end. <laughs> play, play our song. Play, play our outro. Bam, <laughs> bam,